One of the main souvenirs that we will take away from Sheffield this time is the memory of something really special on day five. Now, if you've watched every ball with us since day one, that probably seems about three months ago to you as it does <laughs> to us. However, this was a week past on Wednesday when Kyron Wilson was the man who did something very, very special. He became just the ninth player to make the perfect break at the Crucible. It came in his first round match against Ryan Day, a maximum 147 in the home of the sport. It was only the 13th time it's ever been done, and for Kyron and his two snooker daft boys, Finlay and Bailey, a moment they will never forget, and neither will we. And I think appropriate that it came on the 40th anniversary of the very first one ever seen, from Canada's Cliff Forburn in 83. Cliff Thorburn, the grinder. April 23rd, 1983. The first player to hit the maximum at the Crucible. One, four, seven. Hold frame, Jerry Griffiths to break. I actually had a dream about two months before that I made a 147 in the World Championships. In my dream, I potted a red and then I sliced the black in and then the cute ball hit the black ball cushion, jumped up in the air and landed right in the middle of the reds and they spread all over the place. It's ironic that after a couple of safety shots for Terry Griffiths and myself, the balls were everywhere. Foul, Cliff Thorburn, four. I, uh, um, overcut this uh, red, just trying to stun it. Back up for the black into the same pocket. It doubled up and came all the way back across the cushion and then knocked the red in right to my right to my right here like this. I felt a little bit embarrassed, but uh, boy, that goes away pretty quick. <laughs> well, that's one way of getting them, I suppose. I didn't dream about the first uh, shot being a fluke and everything, but I really felt uh, like I had been there before. I wasn't really thinking about the 147, and then all of a sudden, uh, you know, the water parted, and, and off you go. Well, Cliff has gone through a little bit too far on that shot. I probably played a bad shot uh, to get there. I think the red may go into the centre pocket. It just changed my shot selection. It wasn't, I, well, I didn't feel like it was that tricky. Gradually finding it a little more difficult. At first, I wasn't a very good rest player being taller. You don't need to use the rest. But uh, at some point, I became a lot more efficient at it. And that's a good shot. I ended up having to play those shots with the rest from my own doing, you know. That's a nice shot. Three shots at the rest. That's uh, that's like play, you know, uh, you know, playing like three doubles. Well, this will be the eighth black. The main objective will be to win the frame, but he'll certainly be looking for a very big break here. The cue ball was always pointing in the right direction, but I still had to pot balls. The key, obviously, is to keep on going, but uh, the most important thing is to win the frame. He hasn't quite stunned that as much as he wanted to. Left himself a little bit 
finer angle on the black than you wanted. You shouldn't really miss a black from anywhere, really, because we practice it enough. But yeah, that was an awkward shot, stretching, but what was I, 30, 35 and quite nimble. Griffith's quite aware that he's lost the frame now. I am sure that he is hoping and praying that uh, Cliff Thorburn will do this. Okay, bottom line is that uh, I felt very confident. Have a little break here. Well, what a, what a sensible fellow. At a stage like this with just one red left, he stops, blows his nose, and says, let's have a break. I didn't want to actually pop the final black with my nose running. That's basically what it was. You know, I wanted to have a nice clean face. <laughs> Sounds awful, doesn't it? Keep rolling. You know, we did have to speed up a little bit there, but there was a little bit of room there, more than what people could see, really, but uh, it was very close. And I think uh, Jack Carner said, keep rolling. Well, now this is the real shot uh, that matters, Jack, to get on the yellow. If he can do that, he could be well on. He hasn't come quite far enough. He's left himself a tough shot, but that's 15 reds and 15 blacks that he's taken now. Well, this is carrying 10,000 pounds for the highest break, 5,000 for a championship break, and 3,000 for the highest break. So we're talking about 18,000 pounds on this. Steve Davis uh, won the tournament, so he ended up getting 30,000, and I ended up getting 15. So now that I've made this 18, uh, you know, the powers that be said that I wasn't allowed to make more than the champion, you see. So uh, uh, they said that uh, the 5,000 uh, wouldn't, uh, wouldn't count then. Uh, it bothered me, but hey, I can live without that. But, uh, um, you know, uh, what am I going to do? <laughs> I still made the 147. They didn't take that away. When Bill stuck his head around the corner, I mean, everybody knew then. And I'm saying to myself, Bill, no, not now. The green made a good sound. Oh, I hit it absolutely pure. I just wanted to make sure that I shoot in the brown, that I didn't want to overrun the blue and be on the wrong side of the blue. That would be a complete no-no. And that is perfect. That is perfect. And then I rolled the blue in, and as I'm coming around the table, and I said, oh no, the pink's not on the spot. I went, oh my gosh, and uh, I, well, I probably went like an inch or two too far, but I'm comfortable enough to just roll the pink in. Good luck, mate. Yeah. Oh, wonderful! That is really, truly really wonderful. Okay, I dropped to my knees, but uh, that was the best that I could do. <laughs> you know, I mean, I didn't feel like I could stand up almost, you know, so... Uh, but, yeah, wonderful, wonderful feeling and uh, something that I'll never forget. Just look at the picture. My uh, wife Barbara was, uh, you know, pregnant, and I phoned her after um, after I made the 147, and then she said that she was sorry, and I said, sorry about what? And she said, you know, that she lost the baby. You know, the 147, I would obviously give that up and the world championship for, a, you know, another child, but... Uh, Standing ovation. 
very, very proud of it and uh, made a lot of Canadians proud. I'm glad I, uh, I did it, you know, but everybody looks pretty cool after they make a 147. It doesn't matter what they do. Amazing and uh, bittersweet memories for Cliff and his family of that iconic moment. So Cliff was the first and this is the role of honour. Nine players, as I say, in that 147 club. Stephen Hendry and Ronnie O'Sullivan, the only guys to experience it, not once, but actually three times here. So special, special moments and special memories for us all. Something I think all snooker players aspire to and not so secretly, Ken and Sean. <laughs> uh, how close have you got to it, Ken? Well, I always miss black some 147. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've never got that close here. I think the last maybe couple of reds. But I must say, watching that, I remember that as a kid, mm. watching it. Mm. And they were inspirational, like, mm. pictures, you know, and commentary. And, and you'll never, ever forget that 147 because it was the first one. We'd never seen one before at the World Championship. Absolutely. And for you, Sean? I got to the last red a few seasons ago, and I think the last 16. And uh, I remember it because with three or four reds to go, a play had finished on the other <laughs> side of the arena, and I asked them to lift the barrier up so the rest of the crowd who'd stayed behind could see. Everything was shaking. I couldn't <laughs> sit. I couldn't stand still long enough to pop the balls, and I missed the last round. Oh no! Oh. There's still time. Still time for you both. <laughs> All right, we're going to move on because uh, the man in the middle today is Brendan Moore, the referee who is in fact umpiring his third Crucible final because this is the guy who refed 2014 between Mark Selby and Ronnie O'Sullivan and that 2018 classic between John Higgins and Mark Williams. And after all of this is done and dusted tomorrow night, he's going to hang up the gloves because after 19 years on the circuit, he is stopping. And he's been talking to Abby Davis about his mixed feelings about it. Brendan, a long and successful 19 years as a referee on the World Snooker Tour. Why now to hang up the gloves? It's just come at the right time. Like you said, 19 years, this will be my third world final. It's the perfect way to go out. It's just the right time in my life and my career to start something new. You mentioned a third world final. Not many people get to say that they've completed that hat-trick here at the Crucible. You must be incredibly proud. Yeah, I am, yeah. Like you said, there's not many that's done it. I can only think of three or four off the top of my head now anyway and it'll be harder in the future as well because there's that many young good referees coming through where you, you might not get it might take a while between finals to get another one so yeah I'm, like you said proud's the word yeah I, I'm really looking forward to it and what matches really stand out for you the two world finals obviously I mean Ronnie and Mark Selby that was 18-14 that was great because it was my first one but then in 2018, when you've got John Higgins and Mark Williams, at one point it looked like it might be finished in the afternoon. But John came back and we had a night session and that went 18-16. So that's probably the best game I've been involved in. And what have been some of the most rewarding things for you as a referee? Um, meeting some brilliant people. I mean, the colleagues and players that I believe in behind, they, they're not just colleagues and players. Most of them I consider friends. We get on off the table as well. Um, the travelling that I've done, I've been all over the world, very fortunate to go to places like Australia, Brazil, that I would never go to, uh, possibly. So to do that as part of the job, yeah, I feel very honoured to have been involved in that. And you expect in Monday night to be quite emotional for yourself? I am, yeah. The other three sessions, I mean, the walkout that you, when you get announced out, that's just a brilliant buzz. I love that. But then Monday night, I keep saying this all week, but the nearer it gets to someone getting to 18, and knowing that it's going to be the last time I'm going to say, and the match, yeah, it could be quite tough holding that in at the end. Well, one more match and then it's time to settle down now. Please yourself. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, nicely done. And in fact, just before the second session began this evening, there was a presentation to Brendan in honour of his 19 years of service. And there wasn't a dry eye in the house. In fact, Brendan very, very moved ahead of that. But he's certainly keeping himself in check and doing a brilliant job, as you might